Welcome back to Common Sense Crusade with me, the Reverend Calvin Robinson. Now, with the, with the Tory party facing complete collapse, many are now crying out for a new force in British politics to replace the broken, corrupt mess that is the current Conservative Party. Yesterday, Reform UK and the SDP announced an electoral pact for the next general election, which has renewed calls for the right to form a common front in any upcoming nationwide contest. Can it be done? Joining me now, I'm so excited to say, is the leader of UKIP, Neil Hamilton, the leader of Reclaim, Lawrence Fox, and the leader of the SDP, William Clouston. First of all, guys, thank you so much for agreeing to join me on the show together. Um, I've been conversing with all of you on and off for the last two years, and I gave up on the prospect of uniting the parties on the right. But Rebecca Jane of the UKIP, uh, the new deputy leader, has re-sparked and re-inspired me and restarted this conversation. So thank you, first of all, to Rebecca Jane. Uh, so on that note, let's start with William Clouston, who announced this week that he's already forming a, an agreement with uh, reform. What does that entail, William? Well, it's, thank you. First, thanks, Calvin, for inviting me on. Um, I think we are in considerable economic and political chaos. And I think anything we can do to address it, uh, we will. Um, we've been talking to Reform UK for a long time, actually, and if you're going to get a, a, a cross-party deal of any kind, it does take time. You've got to build trust. You've got to work out the parameters. Um, I feel a little bit of an in interloper in this uh, and in much of the debate on Twitter because uh, people are always talking about some sort of consolidation or deal between the many parties on the what you might call the liberal right or the libertarian right. The SDP is a, a party of the conservative left. It's in a different quadrant, actually. And the interesting thing about the deal that we've done with Reform UK is that it's been done uh, with that in mind. I mean, we, we explained from the start that our economic views uh, are different, obviously, to Reform UK's, and we're not going to compromise on those things. But we found sufficient common ground on the other, the broader questions of political constitutional reform and electoral reform, and also the broad principle that Britain should govern itself. Uh, and there's also probably broad alignment on the, yeah. uh, on the open borders issue. Um, okay. So we've, we've pulled it off. It's a targeted uh, deal. We're looking at a stand-aside situation uh, in a number of seats yeah. and a joint description in a particular geography in South Yorkshire. OK, that sounds like a promising start. Uh, you talked about common ground. I think that's the most important area of this conversation. Let's go around and have elevator pitches. Let's see what the, not the necessarily the party policies, but the principles that these parties are all about. I'll start with you first, Neil, if you don't mind. Give us your 30-second elevator pitch of what UKIP is all about. Well, first of all, we need to control our borders. In the last year, 1.1 million visas were handed out to people from all around the world, two-thirds of them from outside the EU, actually. We've added six and a half million people to our population in 20 years. This can't go on. So that's what we've got to do to start with. We, of course, want to get rid of the cancel culture and the woke um, war, uh, terrorist war that we're all endearing uh, at the moment. We need to uh, have a sensible economic policy, which the Tories certainly can't have because there are two conflicting types of policy which are now apparently going to merge together. Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to raise taxes or, or lower taxes? Well, we're in the low tax category, particularly as we go into... A recession. So we're a small state libertarian party. Um, you know, we want to uh, get rid of all the green nonsense as well, which is causing the biggest transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich in, in my lifetime, as well as producing this unprecedented energy insecurity, which is going to cause immense suffering this Christmas. Um, all the other parties are united on this, and the, the wings of the, the Conservative Party, who are apparently uh, um, fighting o over the, the leadership, they all agree on all these issues. Okay. So it's us against the rest. All right, so immigration um, down, taxes down, cancel culture down. Uh, good start there. Lawrence, give us your elevator pitch. Um, it's just about reclaiming freedom of speech. We've lost it in this country. And um, as a result of it, every single one of our foundational national institutions has been totally captured. So um, actually, weirdly, as a political pitch, my political pitch is get the politics out of things. Mm. Don't put it in things. And uh, I mean, it's great. Reagan said the great line, didn't he? It's amazing what you can achieve if no one wants to take the credit. And um, I find it interesting that these, these smaller parties who were sort of aligned in lots of ways can't just all come together because you're finding a, a 
reform and SDP, but, you know, Richard Tice's view of a small state, uh, low tax economy, I'm not sure how that, you know, buys into the SDP's internationalist climate views and stuff like that. So I think actually rather we need a centre-right coalition if we're going to stand at all, um, or we'll just carry on beating culture around um, and doing what I do anyway. But I, I, I'm surprised that we can't seem to work together. I think it's egos. There's it, it, save saviour complex. Someone wants to go. I I saved the day. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, well. Thank you. William, what's your elevator pitch? Well, the SDP's um, elevator pitch you'll find on the SDP website, but basically it's state and nation. Our, left, our economics is quite left-wing, uh, but I would describe it as uh, bread and butter social democracy. You know, we think that the public utilities should be uh, publicly owned, um, you know, and, and I think most people agree with us on that. Uh, we'd like a, a nationalised railway system. We're a little bit sceptical of, uh, uh, of unfettered global free trade. I think the China effect has damaged the economy. Um, but just to pick up, I mean, it's very interesting, Lawrence's point. I think the, the as I say, I feel a little bit of an interloper because our political offer is a little bit different to the other smaller parties operating in, the, in, in the, what you might call the libertarian right quadrant. I've been quite surprised that there hasn't been more consolidation. Um, and I would, uh, it may seem a little bit cheeky, but uh, there is one very large party in that quadrant, and it's reform. And I, I don't really understand why people, if they like that type of politics, why they wouldn't just put their shoulder behind that. Is it just because it's reform are the Conservatives with a slightly different badge on? Yeah, but the, the, Lawrence, the basic offer that they have, I mean, the, the, you know, f being in favour of free speech, smaller state and lower taxes is basically an off. That's the offer in the quadrant. And I, as I say, I feel I'm in a different place. The argument I would put forward is that we put this invitation to everybody yeah. uh, and Reclaim is the only party that has refused to engage in conversation. So I think, you know, no, Reclaim, I'm here. Reform. This is the problem, is it? <laughs> exactly. Reform, Reclaim, this is the problem. Oh, yeah. About the people on Twitter, people around the country are begging for a coalition. I've said, I've, I've, I've probably had maybe 25 lunches with Richard. Me and William have walked around Rutland Water and talked about coming together until I took a position on masks that they didn't like. You know, it's ultimately, you've just got to put the good of the people first and also not try and take the credit for it. But all of you agree on free speech, on sovereignty of this nation, on unity of the, uh, the country, on democracy. You all agree on all the big issues. What's, what's holding us back? Well, I'm very happy to do a deal with reform. I'll join you now. Yeah. Uh, you and, uh, and as you said, Calvin, Rebecca Jane restarted this debate last week on Twitter and has had a massive reaction on social media. Um, Richard Tice hasn't even had good manners to respond to her invitation. Um, you know, I've looked at the Reform UK website this week. It's got two things on it and policies. I've no idea what they stand for, uh, apart uh, from the two things on the website. You know, we have a fully worked out and published living manifesto. We've been in the business uh, for decades. So you know what UKIP is, what it stands for. And obviously, uh, the manifesto changes a bit over time, mm. according to changed circumstances. But, but, you know, we have a full uh, manifesto of policies over the whole range of public policy. And, you know, we're very happy to share all this. If uh, people are in agreement with us, then I don't have any ego. I'm too old for ego. Uh, you know, I've been there and, and done it all. Uh, I'm only in this now because I believed in these things all my life and I fought for them all my life. And, okay. uh, and I'm still, still doing the same. So, uh, as I say, the, the hand of friendship is there. So we'd, we'd find a lot of common ground on social issues because I think most of you are socially conservative. Economics is neither here nor there because the economy is d defunct anyway. Yeah. Therefore, <laughs> do we need to alter the electoral process in order to get you guys working together and to get you more representation? Do we need to look at PR, for example? Well, PR is, PR is weird because it works both ways, doesn't it? You know, there is nearly nine million in Londoners and you're going to give them all a say and they've got some pretty funny views in London as you've noticed and I've noticed we definitely need to have uh, a better system of first past post is I mean yeah I can see the bonuses of yeah. how it creates stable government but if people know that their vote is going to be wasted which is what's going to happen in the general election what, what, what will happen is the Tory voters will just stay at home 
Well, we, That's what will happen. You know, we have a stable government, which is Tweedledum and Tweedledee. You know, we've, we, we had uh, Tony Blair succeeding John Major, and we had David Cameron succeeding Gordon Brown. Uh, spot the difference. Yeah. Uh, uh, we do need to have a, an electoral system which empowers the people. You know, we got four million votes on in 2015, mm. and won one parliamentary constituency. Which is mm. terrible. Uh, William, I want to give the last word to you. Where do you think we fall on electoral reform? Well, I think electoral reform is absolutely vital. Uh, you know, I think one of the key reasons we're poorly governed is that series of governments take very, very short-term winner-takes-all attitudes. They're more concerned with headlines. And even actually, they don't even uh, extend to the full parliament they're elected for. I think uh, coalition governments tend to think slightly more long-term, and I think we need that. It's always been part of the SDP's core political offer that we need vote fair votes. I mean, ultimately, it's, it's democracy. And, uh, you know, we want votes to have a better relation to seats. I also think it would allow some of the challenger parties to get a little bit more um, uh, headway. And I think that's very important because I think the duopoly has served us very, very badly. Well, thank you very much, all three of you. I hope that's the start of a longer conversation that you guys can take into private because the British public are crying out for it. That was UKIP leader Neil Hamilton leader of the Reclaim Party, Lawrence Fox, and leader of the SDP, William Clouston, with no Richard Tice to be seen. You're with GB News on TV, online, and on radio. After the break, one of the UK's most successful children's